This gentleman from Kentucky, Mr. Whitfield. Thank you very much. Uh, I also would like to revisit the Yucca Mountain issue simply because of the money that's been involved in it and the ramifications of that decision or non-decision has on our country. From the testimony that I heard from the three commissioners, all of you indicated that you, in your own mind, felt that you had issued a vote on whether or not to uphold the Construction Authorizations Board's decision. And it was also said that in order to have a final order at the agency, there had to be a commission order. So if the three of you, in your mind, voted on this issue, we know that one commissioner recused himself. So my question is, if people have voted, who makes the decision that there be a commission order issued? Any of you can answer. Well, uh, Mr. Whitfield, that uh, is generally the, the process that we usually follow. We have what's called an affirmation notice, which is a, an official notice that goes out uh, indicating that we're ready to move to a session to actually uh, weigh in on this order. Uh, that is done by uh, the commission itself. Uh, and when we have an approval of that affirmation notice, that is usually when we proceed to go forward. And so that's, that serves as the proxy to indicate that the Commission itself has come to resolution and come to agreement on an order and that we're willing to go forward. But it is ultimately the Commission that, that makes the decision about the order. But uh, from Mr. Shimkus's reading your testimony earlier, he would indicate that they feel like they voted on this issue and from your perspective they did not vote on this issue. Is that correct? Uh, again, I, I think as I, I tried to explain to, uh, at the time, uh, votes have been cast. Those votes are not the final action. Uh, some of my colleagues have circulated compromise positions as part of the post-voting action uh, to work to bring us to resolution. So uh, I, I appreciate the views that my commissioners have expressed. However, it does not mean that because we have all the votes cast that we are ready to move to an order, and at this point we are not. So are you the one that makes that decision? I am not. The Commission as a whole makes that decision. But they said that they voted, they voted already. That's correct, and that is different from the order that is the final action when it comes to these adjudicatory matters, which is what I explained to Mr. Shimkus. And I think as you heard Commissioner Ossendorf say, we are working to get a majority on that particular order. During the uh, events in Japan, Chairman Jasko enunciated a policy that people living within 50 miles of the damaged reactors in Japan should evacuate. Now that really created an uproar, I might say, not only in Japan and elsewhere, but also in the U.S. because I think we have a 10-mile evacuation um, area in the U.S. So my question would be on an issue like that, did the Commission vote on that or was that just a unilateral decision that you made yourself? That was a decision that uh, was made based on a staff recommendation at the time when we were responding to an emergency situation in Japan. Uh, given that uh, that action was fully consistent with existing uh, U.S. standards for how we would deal with comparable situations, uh, I moved forward with that decision and made that recommendation to, uh, to the ambassador ultimately in Japan. Okay, so you, you, that was your decision based on staff recommendation? Absolutely. Okay. Now, it's my understanding that the uh, Energy Reorganization Act uh, gives the chairman certain emergency powers at certain times. And it's also my understanding that that has never been, imp uh, that, 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 that has been uh, put into operation only once, and that was 9-11-2001. Did you exercise emergency authority in, this ja in the Japanese issue? I, from the day that I became chairman, uh, I have emergency authorities uh, for all events that, that, all emergency situations that could occur that fall within the NRC's responsibility. So there's not any mechanism that you have to go through to exercise that. that that's correct. We don't, we don't make a formal declaration. Uh, the only time where there's an actual, I guess, some type of declaration 
is when I, uh, I transfer those authorities to another commissioner. That's always done in a memo uh, or to a member of the staff, whoever is receiving the authority. So we transfer that in a memo to, so that there's a clear indication of who has the authority. Uh, but the intent of, of the energy uh, reorganization uh, plan was to ensure that the commission or the agency would make prompt decisions. Uh, and so all of those authorities of the commission were vested in the chairman in an emergency mm -hmm. uh, situation so that you would not be taking time to try and determine uh, is this an emergency situation or not and what authorities and who has what, what particular authorities. And uh, at the operations centers, do all of the commissioners have access to the operations center in the uh, event of emergency? Uh, it depends on, uh, on the situation and ultimately uh, the operation center is under the control of the chairman, uh, and uh, uh, so ultimately I decide who has access to the center and what's appropriate for the situation. Thank you.